Hi everyone, this is Raina, and this video is if you have your sun and your moon in Cancer. I don't think I know anybody with this combination, and certainly because the sun and moon are so influential in your personality, that it's going to give a very pronounced Cancerian effect that would make a lot of sense. But one of the things that you want to do is see what degree your sun and your moon are in cancer, because that can uh, color it a little bit. For instance, let's say your sun, uh, let's say you're born around June 21st or 22nd, and your sun is at zero degrees of cancer, or one degree. Now that would be on the cusp with um, Gemini. And those kinds of cancer people might be much more kind of like uh, intellectual, less overtly emotional. I'm just talking about the sun sign. I'm not including the moon sign. And very talkative and things like that. And cerebral, maybe that's a good way of putting it. And then you take in account, and, and of course that could be the same with the moon sign. Um, you might have a moon that is or zero or one degree of cancer, and it will modify some of those cancer traits. Now, the same thing can apply in the other direction. Perhaps you have a sun that's at 28 or 29 degrees of cancer. So in other words, I don't know the exact dates because it will vary from year to year, but maybe around um, July 20th or 21st or something like that, or, you know, those degrees for the moon. And that will be much more extroverted because the Leo, the, the, the Gemini will be extroverted too. Cancer can be kind of shy um, with strangers. And so both Leo and Gemini will tend to make you more extroverted. And also with Leo, there might be that kind of even... Uh, more show-off equality where either you are involved in the theater, you are or like as a performer of some type, or you just are theatrical in your mannerisms. So, and that's not to say obviously that a true blue cancer individual can't be an actor. I'm just talking about mannerisms. And, uh, and also uh, when you're talking about like, interests that that kind of is a natural the person who has a, a leo signature or is close to leo may be more of a ham and if they they want to perform no matter what you know they're just like uh, whether they're doing it professionally or they're doing it as a hobby so um when we look at this combination, when it, it's not going to automatically be a conjunction. A conjunction is when two planets are close enough together to be considered almost like as one. And we look at the planets involved in a conjunction to see what kind of energy that they create when they come together. They don't always have to be in the same sign either. Um, it's really about degrees, but I like it when they're in the same sign because then it has that consistent influence, you know, it's a little bit uh, tricky when you get them in different signs. So, um, you know, the orb, um, sometimes for conjunctions can be as far as 10 degrees apart. Um, I, I do believe that it depends on what two planets are, uh, connecting together. I've seen, there are different schools of thought on how far a conjunction should be apart. Um, a tighter conjunction produces 
the more overt effects. So within two degrees or so, or, you know, you might even say like up to five. But anyway, regardless, this is going to be um, like a conjunction in the sense that they are in the same sign. And so what is being influenced or accentuated is the water element. And this is the element of that is connected to the emotions and creativity and intuition. All of those things connect with that. And of course, cancer is ruled by the moon. So the moon becomes um, the centerpiece here. Even when the sun is in cancer, the moon is really what is influencing that person. And how that um, really plays out is that even a cancer sun sign, forget about what the moon sign is in, whether it's male or female, they may, you know, have a career and they may enjoy their career. They may have ambition, but their heart is always in the home because cancer rules the fourth house of home and family. So there's always like that domestic side of themselves pulling them towards the home, even when they're out in the world. And in the most, um, I was, I, I don't want to say the worst case scenario. That, that's not what I mean at all. But in the most, um, uh, for those who are most influenced by this, they may choose not to work outside of the home. Either they create their own business where they can work from home or they become a stay at home parent. And I, you know, the, it's kind of interesting because I, I think of all water sign males as rather macho. And really what this involves more than anything is that they are traditional in their, um, idea of the gender roles. So as men, they may, uh, think that a man goes out and goes to work. But in fact, they would be very good nurturers. And if they have a partner who is, and I was going to say a wife, because that's usually what they would want is to actually get married and not just live with somebody. Um, she might be somebody who is, if she is somebody who is an air or fire sign, she might end up being the more dominant person in that relationship and the man might decide to stay home. But of course, that is not necessarily the scenario that works the best because a man in that position may feel that she is not acting in enough, in a feminine enough way. I'm you know, I'm a sun and Sagittarius woman. And when I interact with water sign men, it's, I don't always get the feeling that they see me as women because as a woman, because of the way that I am, which is more masculine, um, in how I, um, interact with people. So it's not even throwing any shade at masculine sign women. It's really just how it is perceived. So it can be kind of an interesting dilemma because in some cases, the person do just doesn't feel that strong desire to have a career, career. They would rather nurture something. They would rather, you know, whether it's being out in nature and, tending to plants and being like a farmer and nourishing, um, crops or whether it's taking care of children or taking care of animals. All of these things can be a strong pull for you if you're a double cancer individual. And to add to that, you're also highly sensitive. So the rough and tumble world of you know, career, um, aspirations and that, that kind of, um, 
ambition that makes people want to do whatever it takes to get ahead is just simply not something that you resonate with. Although because your, your son and your moon are in cancer, you're a double cardinal sign. So you definitely are somebody who can, you know, start, be a self-starter. You can do things without somebody having to give you instruction and you may favor working for yourself because of this. However, it's not necessarily something that you initiate because when, when somebody is a double cancer, they are very people oriented because the emotions are flowing. And so being solitary and being, um, in charge of something may not be that appealing ultimately. Remember that the the fourth house that cancer rules is also about the family. So having an environment like a workplace where you treat your coworkers like they are family or you regard them that way can be much more comforting than feeling isolated and alone. You know, when we were at the height of the shutdown and a lot of people were working from home, it was very interesting to read online, you know, different videos and message boards, like how people perceive that. Some people love it and some people don't. Some people want that human contact. And some people are thankful <laughs> for the, the, um, less of it as possible or whatever, least of it as possible. And, uh, so you're just like naturally somebody who nurtures people wherever you go. It's funny when I said naturally and nurture, I thought, wow, think of mother nature and nur and nurture. They're so close together and they seem to go along with each other. Um, so what does this mean? Well, in terms of professions, the professions that you will tend to gravitate towards are those kinds of caretaking professions. The obvious one is being a nurse. And in particular, you may favor being a neonatal nurse, maybe even a midwife, um, things where you can deal with children, babies, but a nurse in general, rather than a doctor that is more clinical, that isn't really caring for patients. That's more like doing that, um, left brain linear type of diagnose, diagnosing somebody and that kind of thing. Other forms of health care, nursing homes, you know, working with the, the elderly. And sometimes when you think of elderly that go into nursing homes, there is almost that regression into a childlike state. So there's like, you know, that brings out the nur uh, nur uh, <laughs> nourishing, nurturing qualities of a double cancer because you see the vulnerability and, you know, the helplessness of these individuals. And I'm not talking about uh, seniors as a whole. I'm talking about those who are more incapacitated. So you might even um, favor Alzheimer's patients and things like that. And it's very interesting about Alzheimer's because one of the features of Alzheimer's or the main feature that we think about is the loss of memory. And cancer is associated with memory. Um, you probably have like a completely um, photographic memory. I was thinking of Mary Lou Henner, who was who used to be on that show, uh, Taxi, and they keep you know re recommending her video to me. You know, she was on I think sixty minutes or something, and she can remember every day of her life, and she's got one of these really wild memories where she can like know the exact date of what happened on that date. And her sun sign I think is Aries, but 
who knows? Um, maybe she has a moon in cancer. I'll have to check that out. But yes, cancer is very associated uh, with memory because cancer is associated with the past. This is what makes cancer individuals so sentimental. And so certainly those of you um, who are a double cancer, you are likely super duper um, sentimental and even if you have trouble, like in your marriage, you think of the good times, which of course that can complicate things. If you need to get divorced, if you're not having uh, good times currently, but you might be hesitant to let something go or even a friendship because you just keep remembering when things were a lot better. Um, this also makes you very interested in your fam family lineage. You may be the family historian and belong to genealogy.com. And um, in terms of professions, this naturally favors somebody who is a uh, professor of history or for the younger grades, um, social studies teacher, because they, they cover history as well. Um, but like I, w if, if you were to just be a history professor or even in high school, they have history teachers, of course, um, you might have some Gemini there because if your son is in, is in cancer, you can very easily have inner planets in Gemini like Mercury, which is the way your mind works, but also uh, Venus, Mars, the rising sign can be any sign. So it could be uh, a sign like Sag or Gemini, which favors um, teaching. But I do think of cancers as teachers for sure. And so being a kindergarten teacher might really be enjoyable for you but even earlier, like early childhood education might be something. I think, I think even kindergarten, kindergarten is put under that uh, umbrella. I studied that for a while, even though I'm not a cancer. So yeah, that kind of thing might go until the first grade or something. So um, in terms of relationships, Oh, and one more thing is that you do, you are highly intuitive. The one thing you have to watch out for is being subjective because water signs, this is one of the reasons why you can have water signs who are um, very intuitive in general, but they're very, they have like a block when it comes to their own ability to discern things. I mean, even just intellectually discerning, uh, make, you know, having good judgment because they're so subjective. Their emotions are so coming into play into what their decision-making is all about and, and, you know, deciding whether somebody is good for them. And I always, I get, I, I, I have to shake my head and laugh sometimes when I'm doing personal readings and I'm looking at somebody's chart and they're like, you know, a cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, whatever. And they have like all this psychic ability. I'm like, why are they contacting me? But I know why, because sometimes you have to get outside of your own emotional nature. So if you tend to be very, um, prophetic or whatever you want to call it, and you can kind of, um, sense when something's going to happen, or you have dreams that, tell you certain things and they've come true and you feel like you have a, a, an ability to, to work in this field, you have to be able to, it's not even give advice um, because it's, it, that's not necessarily the thing, but your perceptions cannot be co um, colored by your own um, subjective feelings on it. And you have to, to realize that other people have different uh, ways of 
living life and perceiving things and that you have to put yourself in their shoes. And you are very empathic. So it's not that you just are completely self-centered and not able to perceive other people's way of um, relating, but it's when the emotions are engaged and you have like very strong feelings about certain issues that it can make it hard for you to um, transcend this. If you're a woman and you are heterosexual, <laughs> I, I hesitate. Well, no, actually this could apply to men as well. Um, family is a very important thing, but you may have, if you have had, you know, negative experiences with the opposite sex, and this could be the opposite sex parent, or if you've been abused by somebody who was of the opposite sex, it can really wreak havoc on your future relationships. Because I do feel there's a tendency with the water signs to be prejudiced. And when we say prejudice, we're not talking about racism necessarily, although obviously that is definitely a form of prejudice and that can also fit into this category. But what I'm talking about um, is being being so affected by um, traumatic experiences, negative experiences that you project those qualities on everybody that looks like that person. So if it's a woman and she, she had problems with her father, then she's projecting it onto men and assuming that they are going to be a certain way. And that is problematic, obviously. And that's not also, it's also not fair. So, um, with men, um, another thing that can come out with cancer men is that they're very tied to their mothers because this brings up a very important point. Your moon sign can indicate the type of mother you had and the type of mothering you had. So with the cancer moon, the mother may have been this very over, overprotective type of mother. So it enhanced, it, um, emphasized those cancerian qualities, but in the negative sense, the more, um, shadow side, which is manipulative. Um, <laughs> and I have to laugh because a double cancer person, if they wanted to, could be the absolute champion in that area where they are very aware of emotions and other very perceptive of other people's emotional motivations and use that in a way to get what they want. This is not honest and it's also not, um, it's not positive, um, in terms of relationships because what we are trying to do is we want, we want other people to cooperate with us from their own, um, desire instead of trying to guilt them to do it, you know, coerce them in some way. And so it's really not, if you can guilt somebody into doing something, it's really not much of a victory because it's, they're doing so, um, coming from a negative motivation. So avoiding that, even though you might have like very, um, good ability to kind of get into somebody's head or their heart is a good idea not to, not to, um, stoop to that. The problem is, is that you may not be doing this consciously. This just comes naturally to a double cancer because they are living in their emotions so much that they, um, that they can tend to, to be like that. And another thing too is favoritism. And this is a form of, you could say prejudice where you, naturally like certain things more than others. That's what subjectivity is. Objectivity is that you can see everyone for, you know, their own gifts and that you're not, um, you're not giving preferential treatment. And these kinds of things can lead to, um, treating your children differently. And that can be very hurtful to your children you may not even be doing it maliciously. You just may naturally vibe with one child and you just like the fact that you get along with them better and you might naturally resent the other child for 
being so different from you. And it might even make you feel on the defensive, like that child doesn't really like you. So it can be like feeling, um, Uncom more uncomfortable about one child versus the other and then treating that other child better that you feel more comfortable around. And, you know, parents have to be super vigilant about not doing things like that. Um, and also like as a boss, uh, you know, being somebody who tends to like observe human nature, I realize that people, and I've read, I'm sure I've read this, you know, many times, people tend to like people who are, who, who mirror their, um, choices in life, their likes and dislikes, they tend to like those people and feel threatened by people who like things that they don't like, or, you know, because it makes you question your choices when somebody is living in a different way, but that's not, that's no excuse to, um, you know, think less of them or treat them differently. So we have to put our personal feelings aside when we're dealing with others in life. And in a similar vein, you may be very defensive. You may take things too personally. Um, you know, cancer people tend to be hypersensitive. There's a difference between sensitivity and hypersensitivity because um, hypersensitivity is personal you are overreactive because you're very self-protective. And when you were young, you may have been somebody who was, uh, maybe you were um, mocked, or what's another word? That sounds really harsh, but um, teased for being too sensitive. Maybe they called you a crybaby. Um, you have to look at the rising sign because that may give you, like if you have Leo rising or Aries rising, you may be much more um, outwardly seeming aggressive and not seeming like you're sensitive. You may put on a good show like that, but you might be very, might have been very sensitive as a, a young person and it makes you fearful of getting that same kind of treatment uh, as you get older and th that anticipation Pitori, <laughs> that's how you say it, uh, response. And really, you know, I think of people when I'm dealing with them and I, you know, being a Sagittarian, sometimes we put our foot in our mouth and we say things unthinkingly that are actually true, but they're very blunt and people just kind of like a what, excuse me, you know, but some people get very offended easily. And that kind of thing can be difficult for you if you have those tendencies and you want to examine what is going on and how you can um, kind of like gradually phase that out and learn how to um, have healthier coping, coping mechanisms. Because what can happen is other people become, you know, a little bit leery of dealing with that. Because they're because when somebody feels like they've offended someone else, that makes them feel bad, you know, unless they're a jerk <laughs> or you know, like a narcissist or something. Maybe they enjoy that. But the a good person will not want to, to do that to other people. And then they feel nervous about interacting with that person because they're afraid they're going to be accused of um, insulting them or something like that. And really, um, you know, Eckhart Tolle talks about the pain body, and that's really something that can come into this as well, because I think um, all water signs, um, trauma affects you even deeper, being emotion, emotional and the most sensitive of all, of all the signs. And so learning how to make peace with the past, not be stuck in the past, and not allow your emotions to get the best of you, to control you, you can be a sensitive person without being controlled by your emotions. I do think it's possible. I think that meditation was made for people like you because your emotions are reactions, especially with the moon in cancer. The sun in cancer can, you know, 
be some of the things that you want to do in the world that involve nurturing, but the moon in cancer is definitely your reactivity and it's very strong in this sign. So being able to learn how to let go of people, places, and things without feeling like it's some kind of a great loss is so valuable. And that again is coming from that sentimental point of view the the crab your um what is it totem or symbol has these claws that are very sharp and and they can stick to, they can cling to things very easily so cancers are always pegged as clingy and a double cancer is going to be doubly clingy and so giving people space, giving them freedom, not being so emotionally needy that you have to be constantly reassured that somebody loves you. When you are not like this, you can tend to be very, come across as very insecure and smothering, emotionally smothering. And you don't want to do that because, um, it pushes people away. And, um, also being codependent, where you're taking care of people um, to the degree that they're not able to do for themselves. So your children, you have to, as they get older, give them more independence and responsibility instead of treating them like babies. Because on an unconscious or subconscious level, you may do that to keep them helpless, to keep them uh, at a place where you can control them. And that, that's where the narcissist comes in. And if there are any, uh, double cancers who have narcissistic traits, they may do this to keep their adult child or their teenage child turning into an adult helpless. And that is a form of abuse. So I'm not saying that you would do that, but unwittingly because of your own emotional needs that you're trying to get filled, you, you would do that. And speaking of which, this is a very important point. If you are a single mother and you have a son, it's very important that you do not turn your son into, into your husband, that you do not treat him like he is the, the father of the other children, that he is your partner, your romantic partner because, um, uh, you know, that can keep that son feeling guilty about trying to break free and having his own life. And so if your, um, son decides to, you know, falls in love, look at your reaction to his, um, female counterpart or, you know, his, his partner. I, you know, I'm, you know, talking about heterosexual relationships because it's difficult. I do think there are different dynamics with same sex relationships and I don't want to even attempt to figure those out. I just want to deal with what is familiar to me and how I can see it playing out with the opposite sexes. So, you know, forgive me for that. And so, and this does happen. I mean, this can be the mother who can't let go of her son and let him, you know, have a wife and feel that that wife is her rival. You know, um, I think that a fair number of cancer men or or moon and cancer men have very clingy mothers and you don't want to be one of those mothers. You want to allow her to, to take over and be his partner and, and be, kind. If you don't like her or if she doesn't like you, um, that's who he chose. So you don't have to necessarily, you know, spend a lot of time with her. If that's something that, you know, you just, there's a very definite animosity if she's treating you poorly, but you just let him deal with that relationship and don't come in between them, you know, because, um, then you could end up losing him as well. And you may be 100% right that she's not good for him, but you don't want to assert yourself like that unless he brings it up to you. If he asks you, then of course you can 
you know, be very um, objective about it, not get personal, but you can just share your observations and be supportive of him. But you just don't want to be that clingy mother that can't let go of her adult son. And, um, and also with your daughters, I mean, you model uh, a strong woman. This is a double feminine energy. So for women, um, this can lead to codependent relationships if you're not a conscious woman who is, you know, feminine and believes in the divine feminine, but is not um, going to allow herself to be dominated. This can make you a consummate artist, the queen of cups or the king of cups. And this can lead to very um, emotionally affecting uh, um emotionally affecting literature or song, song lyrics, especially if you have that Gemini um, influence and you have a way with words, you can just make things very personal and it makes it very real. You know, they say that in writing, the details are what make things seem like they're real. And falling back on your memory that can be a great source of information, even like an autobiographical novel. I think I said autobiographical, <laughs> the way I said that. Or some other type of um, creative output that other people feel at a deep level. So um, you just, you, you have just this ability to tap into the... Um, the sentimental side of life that we all love, no matter what our, our signs are. We, I mean, I shouldn't say everybody, but it's just that, that the fond memories that we have, the, the nostalgia, you know, that's something that you would just excel in is tapping into that. Okay. That's what I have for you. I hope that this resonated. If you would like a personal reading, the link is below. Take care. Bye.